If we don't give to women the possibility to be in the job, in the labor spaces, then this is a loss for women, but also for the nation. So this is not only that we are discriminating part of the society, but this is also a loss on efficiency. Because, you know, this was an important term in the progressive era, was rationality, scientific efficiency. So for her, it's also an argument. If you want to have a better economy for the United States, you need to give more space for women. Women can help to improve the relationship uh, in the work uh, spaces. So I'm Rebecca Gomez Betancourt, and I'm at uh, the University of Lyon, too, and I'm a researcher at Triangle. Charlotte Perkin Gilmans was an, a U.S. woman, uh, probably one of the first that wrote a book uh, who put in the title Women and Economics, published in 1898. She's actually very well known as a novelist, as a humanist educator, uh, more than her works on economics. I became interested in, on, on Charlotte Perkin Gilsman uh, actually because of her biography, who is very interesting. She uh, actually um, was very influential by her thir three aunts. One is a suffragist, one is a writer, another one is an educationalist. And she wrote a lot of books, uh, and in all these books, the role of women was central. Uh, this is a period that historian we call the progressive era, and in this period uh, there is a big transformation on the place of women, kids, young people, also, of course, the race uh, question. And she talked about this transformation to put and to give a more space uh, for women in economics. She wrote a lot, and she's very well known in literature, in sociology, because she has this mainly these two kind of works, uh, literature, mainly uh, autobiographical, as probably the best well-known is the Yellow Wallpaper, in which she described the um, postpartum uh, depression. But she also have this trilogy, uh, very important, probably the most known is uh, Herland, when she, where she described this utopian world. But she also have a lot of writings in sociology and economics, and what I try to do is to read this together, the utopian, the novels, the more psychologist books, and the economics book, and try to understand her thinking and to give her a place in the history of economics and to do more hair stories of economics, to, to, to have more authors, women, in our history of economics. For me, uh, the clearest idea that she introduced is that the necessary condition for women is to be independent, economically speaking. So women needs to go to the workplace, to, to the job market, to earn their life, to go outside of the home. So she really analyzed the behavior of families, women, men, kids inside of the home, and she, she explained the necessity to, uh, for women to be independent, economically speaking. And she also related this with uh, what we call uh, a new ethics. She used the word moral ethics, a hygiene ethics, as many of the authors of the progressive era. And she said that we need to make a link between the economy of the home and the economy of the big companies and societies in the United States. So through these ethics that actually is uh, to pay attention to the common concern of all the members at the home and in the companies and different firms that you going to work on. This is a research that I'm doing with, uh, with some colleagues. One of them is Guillaume Vallet from the University of Grenoble. He already uh, published a very nice article in the European Journal of the History of Economic Thought on Charlotte Perkin Gilman. And we have other projects, for example, on prostitution and on race on Charlotte Perkin Gilman. But in our current research that we present in the American Economic Association at New Orleans, we focus on the notion of industrial ethics is how to be our behavior when we go and work in these big societies in the United States. So this is the period of the transformation and a big development in the United States. So how uh, women and men and all the individuals, how they need to live, how they need to conduct it, uh, how to be this moral and this, uh, what we call the industrial ethics, uh, to, to, you know, for the, she say, for the good of the nation, for the good of the United States. What she exactly says is that we really need to make a projection that what we have at home 
in uh, the different companies where we're gonna work. So we need to reproduce what we have at home, so our behavior with our family on our workplaces. I'm very interested in this progressive era in general, in this period, uh, which generally speaking, we can say that start in the 80, 80, 80, 19, until the 1920s. And I used to work on a lot of men economists uh, as Irving Fisher or as Edwin Walter Kemmer or Frank Tosic. But uh, then I said I'd really, I need to enlarge these pictures and to do more hair stories and start to look at uh, other characters that are absent in the history of economics. So I found Charlotte Berkin Gilman's, I found Jane Addams. Uh, more on the, uh, on the sociology and economic side of the academics, but then uh, they were not economists. They were not professional economists. So, and this is, you know, uh, Charlotte Perkin Gilman was born in 1860. Then you have some period, some years, and then you have the first generation of women economists. And Hazel Kirk is one of the first uh, economists. She studied at the University of Chicago. She wrote her dissertation with one institutionalist economist. And so she has another way to write, another sources, another style, uh, methodologies. Both are really interesting and both contributing to the history of economics. Uh, I think this is interesting to make the links and to try to make the connection from the very first generation of women who were interested in economics but actually didn't study economics in, in at the universities and then this first generation of professional economists as Hazel Kirk. So she was one of the first home economists in the uh, United States. So this is a very important movement, uh, a department at, inside some universities in the United States. They have their journal, their society. So Hazel Kirk, Jessica Peixoto and others are economists. The very, very first generation, they study chemistry, physics, uh, and other more technical um, Careers. So Hazel Kirk is a, is a very curious uh, figure. She tried to um, to make a place uh, for women at the universities. So she fought a little bit with the economics department. Uh, so she she found a refuge in the home economics department. And four years later, she got a position as a professor of economics. So she, bo she was bo both professor of economics and home economics. So this is very interesting in her story. It's very interesting to, you know, to trying to complete the, the history of economics, of trying to do this hair story of economics, because then you find key characters, key elements as Gilman, as Peixoto, as Kirk or Reed, because Kirk actually, she uh, was supervised, she supervised nine PhD students at the University of Chicago. So she formed kind of a school of thought of women economists. So what I, I think for me now, uh, until now for my research, is that I, I can keep some elements from Gilman, for example, the, the importance of this empowerment of women, the importance of this economic independence for women to have then social and political rights. And um, maybe for Kirk, the importance that she gave, for example, to the consumption, consumption economics, because until now, like all the 19th century is a lot of saving and growth. And then she put a light on the consumption part of economics and both of them gave importance to what happened inside of the home. So, you know, there, there are some links between them, even if, you know, there are very different characters. One is a social reformer. Charlotte Perkin Gilsman have many relations with women, men, romantic relations. So there are these letters, personal journals, all the biographical aspect of her of her life are very, very important. And then you have uh, Kirk, who is an economist, a professional economist, but then you can trace some links uh, between the two, and this is fascinating. One aspect of um, uh, Charlotte Perkin Gilsman's ideas that f I found very original is when she said that we need to connect the home with our behavior in the workplaces, is that she say women have this capacity Actually, she said this natural capacity. So uh, I criticize this a little bit because she said that this is genetical. But women has this capacity to, um, in the job market, in the labor spaces, to transform 
uh, the relation thanks to this modernhood, this uh, capacity to include, to develop more solidarity, better relations uh, among human beings. So what she said is women has this capacity to counterbalance the behavior of men that are in all the institutions, and she denounced this. She said universities are, are taken by men. Most of the societies and the the job market in general is taken by patriarchal system, and she used the term. So she denounced this, and she said women have this capacity. And if we don't give to women the possibility to be in the job, in the labor spaces, then this is a loss for women, but also for the nation. So this is not only that we are discriminating part of the society, but this is also a loss on efficiency. Because, you know, this was an important term in the progressive era, was rationality, scientific efficiency. So for her, it's also an argument. If you want to have a better economy for the United States, you need to give more space for women. Women can help to improve the relationship uh, in the work uh, spaces. The study of these two characters is very important to understand, for example, uh, many debates that we have today between gender economics and feminist economics. We have these two uh, subfields of economics that are I hope very influential uh, in the in the current debates and still very influential. And this is uh, some scholars that are more focused on microeconomics or in the behavior inside the household. And you can do uh, quantitative or qualitative methodologies. And then you have uh, a more macroeconomic debates, a larger debates. Uh, certainly more political engaged on feminist economics. So I'm part of IAFI, International Association for Feminist Economics. So I'm a historian of economics, but I'm also a feminist economics. So the study of these two characters allow me to present to my students at the University of Lyon uh, the contribution of these women in the economic terms and the, in methodological terms, but also their fights as uh, we can use also in feminist economics. When I discuss with my students uh, at the University of Lyon, they always ask me like uh, to contextualize these contributions, if this only US story or this happened in other part of the world. And it's true that the progressive era is a very American movement, but also in, um, in another institution that I'm part of, and, and I'm currently the president of the Latin American Society for the History of Economic Thought, ALAPE, we are also studying the same movement that happened at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, and still happened of the place of women in society, the place of women economists in academia, and their contribution. So I hope that we can find another characters as Charlotte Perkin Gilman's or Hazel Kirks in Latin America or in France or in other part of the world.